like to welcome you to the uh, September meeting of the Alliance for Better History 6. We'll start with introductions. My name is Marvis Phillips. I'm uh, President of Parliamentarian Land Use Public Safety Chair, Legislative and Out Analyst, and I live on the 12th floor of this building. Susan? I'm Susan Bryan. I uh, live across the street. I am a resident, um, and I'm the uh, Treasurer of Alliance for Better District 6 in the videographer. I'm Jonathan Perlman. I represent Elevation Architects. We'll make a presentation tonight about uh, 1075 Folsom Street. Our office is in Russian Hill on uh, Green Street. Thank you. I'm Sam Vanderveld. I'm the head of Proof School. I'm here with Zachary Sequentes, Nina and Jorge, uh, architects for the project. We'll be making a presentation about the, uh, our, our relocation to 973 Mission Street. Okay. Robert? Robert? Thank you. Oh, over here. I'm oh, sorry. Rex DeBlora with uh, DeBlora Consulting. I'm here with Pillar uh, Capital. Thank you. John Gray with Pillar Capital. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next one we'll our, on part of our agenda, um, over the ground rules. Since we do vi uh, video that video, vide uh, video, video, tape this. I, but you're asked to turn off all pagers, cell phones, electronic devices, so there's no interruptions during the meeting. Um, if you do not wish to be on the video, we ask you to stay behind the camera. Uh, we also ask for no hackling or name calling. We would like you to create a safe environment in which every participant feels free to speak by reserving any negativity. We ask people to speak responsibly, emphasizing the positive. We ask not to interrupt other speakers or engage in side conversations or other distracting behavior when others are speaking. Um, we don't do door prizes right now. We're not doing food, and there's no pets. Uh, well, thank you. Also, uh, we do uh, donations, and I'll ask Susan tonight. We have a lovely envelope for donations. Uh, Susan passed around. So feel free to give what you can. Um, we take change dollar bills or anything larger you have to want to share. Um, I did really good. I forgot mine tonight. Okay. We, uh, we run this organization on what we uh, make here in donations and membership dues. And um, it helps cover the cost of all the printing and mailing and other services that we provide. So we ask for we appreciate every penny we can scrape together. So I will go over the agenda. It's slightly changed. Um, where I have a presentation from 1075, 1089 Folsom, and 973 Mission. There's a possibility 793 South Van Ness might show up. They were invited. There's also a possibility that um, 180 Jones or 1060 Mission might show up because they were invited. But neither one of them got back to me, so I don't know if they're coming or not. Okay. Thank you. So, without any ado, we'll go to 1075. Pull some, please. Um, uh, oh, here for the camera? Uh, here. I want to put these down so people can see them. Can I just do it here? Yeah, me yeah. hold up. Can I just, yeah, me just hold it. Can I just do it? Well, you want to set them on the table where we are. We can push that back so Mar uh, Marvis. Well, I just want people to be able to see it. So. Okay. okay let me I can hear. I don't need to necessarily see. I can hear. Okay. Wait. Wait. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 all right now. Okay, let's see, this goes, this goes pretty wide. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah we're, we're almost, let's see, yeah. 
There, okay. Now. Okay, I'm Jonathan Perlman with Elevation Architects. Uh, Rex, Rex Tamora, with, um, uh, representing Builder Capital. Yeah, he's helping us out on this. Um, so the project is um, on Folsom Street, uh, near the corner of 7th, um, and near uh, Victoria Manola Drews Park, Dawes okay. Park. Um, there are these uh, small buildings here that you see on the south side of the street. Uh, this is 1075 Folsom. 1089 is just a kind of a shed that's pushed way to the back there. Okay. Um, so, the, so we're looking at merging those properties. Um, so in the site plan, um, this is uh, Folsom Street, Sherman here, 7th here, that's 1089, this is 1075. Okay. 1075 is a uh, one story and in the front it's got a mezzanine space, uh, commercial, old commercial space. It's been vacant for a number of years now, three or four years now. So uh, my charge from the client was to, uh, we can do that later, okay. um, was to design a uh, residential building with commercial space on the ground floor um, for the site. The zoning allows for a six story building there. And we went through a number of iterations and decided on um, going to efficiency units, SRO, efficiency units and by the planning code if we have SRO efficiency units they all have to be that or we have to abide by the eastern neighborhoods um, uh, requirements for size of units things like that so we chose to go this way with uh, the SRO units um, and so essentially the entire ground floor the entrance will be over here there'll be some concrete here metal behind uh, and a fairly sizable, about a 1,500, uh, 1,600 square foot uh, commercial uh, space on the ground floor. Um, and then above, essentially each one of these is, is a unit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I can show you the plan. Um, the idea was to uh, kind of soften this by you know, making it kind of playful and fun, and then use a, a wood panel um, on uh, the body of the building and then pick up the top as metal, again, to kind of dematerialize it. So as it goes up towards the sky, it looks lighter. Um, these wood panels um, on the corner of 6th and Howard is, and I can't remember the name of it, but there's a concrete frame building. It's a, um, a, a low-income building on the corner. Yeah, I can't remember the name. Mercy House. It's a Mercy yeah. House, right, that's right. And it has these wood panels in the concrete frame. Um, so this is the same kind of material. So it's a very tough, in terms of weathering, it'll, it'll last a long time. And, um, it's, a, it's a good product. Um, we're looking at, and you, it's a little hard to see, but this is the front of the, looking from the front of the building. This is looking from the back of the building. The front of the building comes straight up you know, from the sidewalk and embraces the, the street wall. The back is much more cut up, it goes in and out. Um, allows for a lot of light to get into these units and does not maximize the site. So the rear yard on this is, is about uh, anywhere from 8 to 10 feet deeper than the minimum required yard. So the plans, the general plans, this is the ground floor, Folsom Street is here, uh, the, the entrance to the lobby for the building is here, the commercial space is here, there are three units um, on, the, on the grade, on the backyard, so they'll essentially take advantage of the yard space. Um, bicycle parking and services here. And then the floors are basically the same, where we have um, units, five units along the front here and four units along the back. Um, at the second floor level, these units have some nice outdoor space as well on the roof of the spaces below. Um, and then, like I said, the upper floor and roof. We are looking at seeing if we, you know, to maximize uh, solar panels on the roof, um, so we can generate a significant amount of the energy for the building on site. And that's kind of what it looks like. Um, we have uh, one issue, which is that we do throw a very tiny, almost infinitesimal amount of of uh, shadow onto uh, Manola Park, <laughs> and uh, that's something that we're going to have to go through the process of um, working with Park and Rec, Rec and Park, and the Planning Department. 
um, it comes out to be something like two one hundredths of a percent over the course of the year that we would be adding. And while they don't, while the city doesn't consider trees to be uh, in place when they do the shadow studies, the shadow for this building falls on a bank of very dense trees. So, I mean, obviously trees can die, but I would assume they'd replant them if uh, if a tree died there. Um, so, in terms of the shadow, we feel like we're, you know we're not going to change the feeling of the park at all because those trees, you know. The, the shadow of those trees overwhelms the shadow that we have, the tiny little bit we have. So um, that's the project. We have 48 units um, on six floors. Um, that's, that's pretty much it, unless there's some questions. Yeah. Um, when working with Rec and Park, you can always go after what we have here because uh, 145. Uh, Taylor Street shadow toward the park. Right. Um, it's a nine-story building. and shadow toward the park. They allowed that. Uh, the new building going up on the corner right here, where the construction sign is, I guess that's one over there. Right down here. Um, that sh shadow is the park. Um, and uh, they have uh, there's some shadow from the 950 Market Street building. Right. The also shadow of the park. So there is a, um, a there's it's been there that they have let small amounts of shadow particularly early in the morning, um, be more allowed than if it was in the middle of the day or something? Um, ours is very, very late in the afternoon, evening. Like in the summer, it, it hits at like 7.15 in the evening. So, uh, we have nothing in the morning because the, the park is to the east of us. Yeah. So our town is coming from the west. But it's, again, it's at the very end of the day. And I, I would imagine that um, they would probably slide it, but you can always use the different areas, buildings like we have down here. So while we shadow in the morning, um, uh, I mean, this building here does a lovely job. In the morning. In the morning, yeah. In the morning, yeah. But that was already here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I would imagine there are other examples of small amounts of shadow. Yeah, and one of the things that they look at is what is the no shadow option? You know, what would the building be if you didn't have shadow? We would lose uh, most of two floors. On you know, we lose something like uh, eight or ten units, and that hardly seems like a good trade-off to take some shadow that falls onto trees instead of getting you know eight to ten more units. So um, we're hoping that that will be the yeah. outcome. The other question I have: uh, you have a math foundation. Uh, most most light. I don't know. You know, because the the soils here. In all of South of Market, we probably will need to do some piles here. Um, because one of the areas that I focus on, um, protection areas of liquefaction light and groundwater is all over South of Market, sure. is um, groundwater rise during sea level rise and the effects it has on foundations of buildings. Right. Um, because areas where you're building, the, the water table is only six to seven feet below the surface. That's right. Um, if groundwater goes up three feet, um, it could be literally in your basement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or your foundation. We don't have a basement. Or, you, <laughs> yeah. you're the basement. or your foundation holding up your building is sitting there, so sitting there in water, absorbing all that moisture, right. which isn't good on foundation. Right. Of course. Um, so that's one area. So I suspect we will probably uh, have to do here. We haven't, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't done those testing that testing yet. Um, so when you point. get a geotech report. Can you send me a copy? Um, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Great. I will write that down. Any other questions about this? Okay. Nice project. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, how many commercial units in the, in the ground level? Um, right now it's one space. One I think space. it'll depend on you know what comes up along the way. It certainly could be two decent sized yeah. spaces. I yeah. think we have wonderful addition to neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah, now, do you have any? When you say you have parking? No, there's no there's no uh, car parking for the units this small. We have the bicycle parking. Okay. Um, but typically for units this size, people don't have cars. Yeah. And we well, have extremely good yeah. transit in this neighborhood. Okay. Well, you know, uh, there might be people that have those small electric bicycles and little runabouts. Right. Uh, you know. So, uh, I mean. Um, so where you have the 
bicycles. Maybe you could have a few outlets or something that people could. We, yeah, we can definitely look at that. I mean, ours is, you know, the size of our bicycle room right now is, is generous. Uh -huh. um, what the, the, depart the planning department is requiring now with the transit demand management system is that we have different size bikes. We have e-bikes. We also have the, mm -hmm. the bikes with the, you know, the, um, the baskets in the front, the delivery style mm -hmm. bikes. So we will, you know, design that room so it accommodates, mm -hmm. um, you know, a variety of, of bicycle types. Mm -hmm. um, and that's now becoming more common for the you know, city to require. You have going to have laundry facilities there too, or? Each unit has laundry in it. Oh, okay. So they'll have their own washer dryer uh -huh. in the, rather than a, a centralized. Okay. Laundry. That's actually better. It's, more, it's much more efficient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, thank, thank you very much. All right. Susan, you want to get the wrap? Huh? What? Oh, the lights. Oh, we turned the lights off here to make it darker so people can see the Program. Okay. 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 Now. Okay. Are you able to? Yes. Capture I, the, the uh, yeah, I've got. I've got it. Like uh, this. I mean, this is a. I, I got a lot of zoom here. Perfect. You want to come and take a look? Oh no no no! I trust you completely. <laughs> uh huh. So I'm Sam Vanderbilt, I'm the head of Proof School, and I'm here with, as I mentioned earlier, with Zachary Cifuentes, who is uh, another member of the leadership team of the school, and our dean of humanities, as well as the architects for the, two of the architects for the project, Nina and, and Jorge. Uh, I'd like to, to briefly introduce you to the school, actually, and then say a little bit about how we're, um, uh, how, how we're imagining becoming part of this, of this neighborhood, being a good neighbor having a positive impact. The sorts of things that you want a school to bring to a neighborhood. Uh, we've been just up the hill, actually, from, from where we are now at 555 Post Street for the last two years. It's a very young school. And the, the mission statement of the school is to provide a transformative experience, uh, educational experience for young people with an active curiosity and a passion for mathematics to equip them to reason and communicate and positively impact their world. And what I mainly want you to take away from that is the fact that we're a school for a particular kind of kid, that we're trying to bring together kids who love math. And they're often there are one or two of them in any given school, and there's not much in the way of support. There's not much in the way of peer group. And what I've seen happen at summer programs that I've worked with is that when you bring a lot of these kids together, there's uh, a remarkable kind of, of uh, community forms. But we're a full curriculum liberal arts high school and middle school for, um, for the kids. We teach science and math and, and literature and language arts and art and, uh, and history, the, the full gamut. So it's, it's a full curriculum school. As I said, we, we've, been, we've been here in the city. We opened our doors in September of 2015. And we're a relatively small outfit, actually. Uh, we opened with just 44 students in our current space. In year two, we grew to 58 students. And this year, we're at 78 students and 16 staff and faculty combined. Uh, and that's about 2 thirds. Right now, we're at about 2 thirds of, of what we anticipate to be our maximum size. Uh, we're, we're aiming for a en enrollment of no more than 120 with faculty and staff of, of no more than about 25. But we like that. We, we enjoy being a relatively small school. It allows us to do what we, what we intend to do as uh, much more effectively. Uh, and maybe just in, in closing, I'll say that, um, that Proof School is a, is a private school. It draws on kids from all over the Bay Area. Uh, it's a school with need-blind admission because kids who love math come from all walks of life. And so what we do, as we consider students to bring into the school, we try to identify kids for, who, would, who would flourish at the school. 
And that is our number one concern as an admissions uh, committee.